Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, whoever is, is looking to this um, talk, a short talk, which is associated with the main course, which is about uh, analyzing data um, in the cloud or in these in di di um, distributed environments, um, compute environments using NextFlow uh, with QuantMS. This talk is only about the configuration file, the main file we use to launch our pylon to describe to describe our, our data. My name is Jacet perdi -Berol. I am the team coordinator at the European Bioinformatics Institute. Um, what is actually SDRF? SDRF is file format that we developed last year. It's published in Nature uh, Communication um, about how to describe the sample metadata and its relation with the data files. This actually, um, um, came from a really, really old problem in proteomics, which is basically in proteomics in the archivals. Uh, most of the data that is deposited are the um, instrument file, the raw files, the result files, and intermedia files, um, or including also plots and configuration files. And then there were also, uh, is also deposited the data set in general information, like a description of the title, abstract protocols, speeches, and so on and so forth. But for a long time has been missing the relation between these instrument files and which sample was captured on each file. And that's what we want to model it here. Let's call it, this is the file format that try to model the experimental design, um, but it's also capturing a lot of metadata around the samples and a lot of metadata around the file itself. I will, in this short presentation, I will try to explain what are the main, uh, main advantages of this file format. And I actually will put some examples of um, my own annotated data sets and how this, actually this data set, how are triggered uh, with QuantMS, which is the main objective of this course. What are the use cases we want to support? We want to support uh, with the file format, with SDRF, which is a tab delimited file format, we want to support the, um, the uh, to describe the relation between the sample and the files. The, the file format is actually enable, enable the user, bioinformaticians, mass spectrometrists, biologists, to describe each sample in which file it is contained. File right now is mainly about the uh, output of the instrument, the mass spectrometer, um, we want to make this file format actually easy for annotation, that someone with no expert in bioinformatics can open their own Excel uh, um, software in their own computer, a TXB, and actually start annotating. It should be compatible with other file formats, and really, really important, it should be ontology-based. What is an ontology? Okay, every term, we want that every term in the SDRF is actually a controller vocabulary term. Like if we describe, for example, what type of uh, instrument, we want that all the instrument uh, um, of the same model are called in the same way. We don't want, for example, someone call it uh, LTQ orbitrap and somebody else call it LTQ slash orbitrap. No, we want the same term for the same concept. And that's what ontology based mean. We actually use ontologies to describe not only the properties, but also the, um, um, the values of the properties. Um, wh why, why SDRF? Well, we actually look into multiple options, um, and SDRF is actually not new. SDRF is actually uh, came from the main stuff for the um, microarray and rna seq data community is part of the main tab uh, file format, which is extensively used in transcriptomic and RNA-seq. And the main idea is that we want to reuse the file format for in the future when someone actually performs a multi-omics experiment and they have their own RNA-seq data deposited in Array Express, and then they have their own um, proteomics data deposited in Pride, they actually use the file for the same file format to describe the, the, the file. And there is extensive uh, tooling for validating main tab and SDRF, and we will talk a little bit about that in the last um, slide. 
how an SDRF look like, okay? An S SDRF, is, as, I, as I said before, has three major parts, I would say, or components. It's a tab delimited file format, where it's basically a mean, meaning in a table, where every column corresponds to a property of the sample of the data file or the factor value, which is actually the the condition, the variable under study. Let's say when you try to uh, study in your experiment, like uh, phenotype, like or you, uh, for example, you are in this case you have a cancer study, and then you have some control variable, and then some primary tumor. This is for, uh, called, for example, we call it here the phenotype. This is the variable you want to study, and each value of that variable is basically. The, the value of that condition for this particular sample in this particular profile. It is also important to know that this is the relation. In this case, for example, in the first uh, part of the table, you have sample one. This is the organist part. And here, the column is actually what is the property I want to describe. Um, for the sample, they have a prefix called characteristics. For the data, they have a prefix called common comment, and actually this has been enforced before creating SDRF for proteomics. This is coming from the RNA and uh, RNA and the microarray community, and we try to follow up this concept. Inside um, brackets, then you have the property that you want to study. In this case, for example, this is a characteristic, a disease, a characteristic, an organism, and this is the actual value for this sample. Okay? Then, it's, it's clear that you uh, SDRF has some characteristics for the sample, some characteristics for the data, data files, and then the, the, the factor value on the study. Actually, I didn't mention before, but this is really extremely relevant. SDRF is an open source standard, SDRF for proteomics, an open source standard file format. You can find plenty of information and interaction with the developers of the standard here in this community, Proteomics Metadata uh, Standard and the, in, in, in GitHub. Then why this is experimental design? This is a really nice example of a labor-free experiment because it's not, SDRF not only handle the, the, the metadata around the sample, the data file, and the factor value, but also the relation of the experimental design. And this is done through a couple of properties that are mandatory, required for, for, required for every SDRF, that it should be written in the document. For example, and they are um, the label. In this case, this is really important, really different from uh, the RNA and RNA-C world, when you don't have multi multiplexing is not common. But in proteomics, you have labor-free experiment where every sample can be are, uh, not labeled. Then you don't have multiple samples in the same, um, let's say, channel or in the same, uh, um, I would say, yeah, in the same channel. And you don't have the concept, you have the concept of replicates, but you know, in proteomics, we have also the concept of fraction. And this is really common because also in RNA, then you have two ways of when you do a TMT, you multiplex multiple samples in the chain in the same channel. Um, uh, and when you do fractionation, you split multiple samples into different rows. Then at the very end of the table, you have a row file, and then you at the very beginning a sample. And these three columns define how this would be combined or how they would be related. This sample one with the same exception is repeated twice, and it's basically because this, this sample, which is the same biological replicate, is actually, it actually contains two, uh, um, two technical replicates. This is not fractionated, but you have two technical replicates of the sample. Then if actually you can have the same relation if this is only one technical replicate, but you have two fractions. Then the relation between the sample and, and, and and the data is actually defined by the technical replicate, the label, the fraction, um, um, and, uh, yes, uh, the, this, these three things, okay, mainly. Um, what that means is that 
that in the technical replicate, this means that you have repeated one, the same sample twice with different configurations in the instrument. And then what will be changing would be the name, the, the uh, properties related with the data file. When you have two different replicates, okay, uh, what is the concept of replicate here, biological replicate, is you have two different replicates because it's the same factor value, okay? It's the same factor value, but you have two different samples. These are two different samples for the same condition, let's say. Then they are called two different biological replicates. Um, when you start writing the SDRF, you realize that this is the way you re relate the, an experimental design. This is the actual experimental design. The factor value is the phenotype. And these are uh, the sample that you have, and these are the technical replicates, and these are the final row files. That's why, and this is really important, a crucial point, this is why you have multiple, you, you can have repeated the sample multiple times, okay? And that's why the source name, which is the exception of the sample, is actually really important, okay? That's why the way you write um, an experimental design. Okay, I will not go into detail the previous slide, but I want to go into some examples. Then, for example, when you have a disease, you need to go into this EFO, ontology term, ontology, um, uh, we, we use for the, <coughs> sorry, we use for the uh, sample metadata, mainly EFO ontology terms, okay? EFO is the uh, expression, uh, experimental factor, Ontology, something like that. I don't really rename. I, I normally use the acronym, but not the, the full name. Um, and it is actually an ontology that contains multiple ontologies to describe disease, uh, um, organisms, um, for example, the cell line, and so on and so forth. And for the for the data description, we use EFO, but also we use um, MS, Unimod, and so on and so forth. Then, the, as I said, the actual um, the actual name of the column is the characteristic and disease, and then when you go inside, the value of the column needs to be the ontology term. Let's go back to this particular example. This necrotic tissue is needs to be a term in uh, OLS. You need to go to OLS and, and try to find what is the term that really describes your 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 sample for the disease. The, 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 you can write the, the term as the name of the term, and that's the simple way to do. But we have more complex to, uh, way of writing the terms, and I will explain with a couple of examples. For example, for port translation and modification, because when you there is sometimes that you want to capture not only the term but also some properties of that term that is not possible to do it with the, with the ontology term only. And this is, for example, how do you describe a, a, a PTM? I and how this is related with quantum S, I will explain in, in, a, in detail at some point with examples, but it is important that we want to capture for every sample and every row file what PTM, possible PTMs, we are expecting in that particular um, data file because different to RNA and in proteomics we are interested in to explore what are the PTMs uh, that are present in the sample. Of course there will be people that say okay if you you cannot express all the possible PTMs that are in the sample uh, in the data file because if you use open search you can have multiple PTMs not only the one that normally you look for them that is true but in 90% of the cases, you know really what are the main PTM presented in the sample or in the data file, sorry. And you want to describe which are those uh, PTMs. How do you, you, you write a key value pair? A key value pair property in the, in the file will look like this. When you have a key, what is the key? In this case, is name of the, the, the PTM. This is the name of the PTM. In this case, is you have where, where, what is the accession in Unimod, for example, what is the target uh, amino acid in this case, and so on and so forth. This actually is the way you describe, and you will see one big example uh, with that. Um, and this 
the way you describe the entire term and the way you, you uh, describe is a key value pair with semicolon splitting between each key value pair for the term. Um, what will happen with the SDLF is if you submit an SDLF to Pride in your database, then it will go directly into uh, another um, uh, another database, which, we call, which, which is called Biosample. But actually, I want to explain here, where do, do I take the term? For example, this is organisms here. And if you go to organisms in OLS, okay, OLS, this is the parent term. And inside the parent terms, you will find Homo sapiens. And actually, this is really important because you need to have here what is the main property, and that is an ontology term in, or in EFO, but inside you have the property of that ontology term. Okay? Then you need to interact quite a lot with EFO to, to describe your metadata. Okay? Um, then what actually, what, we, we have the concept of uh, sample templates, mainly what kind of uh, um, properties are required or mandatory for each uh, sample and for each type of experiment. For example, in human, we want for every human data set, the organisms, the source name, but we also have one ethnicity, age, development stage, sex, disease, organism, part, cell type, individual, and so on and so forth. If you are in a, in a cell line experiment, you should you should provide the same line code here, but not the individual because this is not in uh, experiments in human. As I said, this is a community-based um, um, uh, approach, and there is a lot of people that has contributed with that. And we have a, um, um, a validator that people can go and then check how what what happened with the validator. I mean, what 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 what. Uh, how to uh, validate their files created. Why this is so important, okay? I will put one example here. Allow me to show this example. I hope this is showing in the, in the recorded version of the tool, of the presentation. This is how, this is how an SDRF look like, okay? Then here you have the samples and here you have the properties. And why this is so important for QuantMS? QuantMS will take this SDRF and will split each sample into one processing node, okay? It will take, there is some properties that are mandatory and required, like for example, the cleavage agent that was used, in this case, trypsin, or for example, the PTMs that was used. For example, this is how do you put oxidation how do you write oxidation, oxidation methionide, and then you put the target amino acid at the unimod. Then, um, and also for DDA experiment, it's really important the fragment ma mass tolerance, the precursor mass tolerance, because this will give us how you map, how you can identify uh, for, how you can perform the identification, which for each peptide you can map to, a, to you, you can identify each spectrum in the row file. And then you have the factor value, which is in this case is the disease. This is actually all these samples and row files are normal. And then you have the condition here, which is a cell, a cell, a form, a form cell carcinoma. Why actually happening with, what, what, what actually happening with QuantMS? QuantMS will take this particular SDRF and uh, in the first presentation, I explained a little bit about that. It will take this sample then this row file associated with the sample. If you have multiple samples associated, like in this case, this case is a TNT, you have multiple channels. In TNT, you need to write every channel for every uh, sample. But if you go, if you go to the row file, this is actually same row file, okay? Then it will take this to this, the, the same row file, okay? And then it will trigger with the same parameters knows what is the precursor mass, what is the fragment tolerance, and the PTMs, and it will trigger a search step, let's say with Comet, MSDF Plus, and so on. And it knows, because it knows all the experimental design, what are the channels that are there. Because of that, it performs the quantification um, on each channel, and at the very end, it has the experimental design to perform the differential expression analysis using MSDFs.
Okay? And that's actually the beauty of starting from this. You describe your entire experiment. You describe all the parameters or most of the parameters that are relevant for the type of experiment. I will put another example where actually fragment tolerance are not really relevant because it's a DIA experiment. And because it has the factor value, it knows what to compare. Normal against uh, cell carcinoma. And actually, this is a really relevant example because you have here something called norm. Norm is actually, in, in, in TMT experiment, you have something like pool, when you put one channel that contains all the information to, do, to perform um, normaliza normalization again, those channels. Because this, is, this pylon quant MS is so tight with um, um, MS stats, we know that MS stats, when one, one condition is recognized as norm, then it's used as a pool, and that's what is described as so on in that case. Then you have at the very end the quantitation, but the beauty of this is that you also have all the information about this, the experimental design. In this case, we don't have that much because it's a post-annotated -anal 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 experiment, but you are on experiment, you know what is there. And this is, for example, the individual. This is P1, this is the fair individual, this is also from the fair individual, and then you can describe if it's a male or female, and so on and so forth. And here, the whole idea is you start by describing your experimental design, your sample metadata, the conditions, but also the properties around each row file. And then you give this to QualMS. QualMS perform the analysis and give you back the result, which is amazing for reproducibility, uh, for standardization, and also for making more uh, transparent your result and your analysis. I hope this has been helpful and I will, uh, you can go uh, to the first talk to see how SDRF is coupled to QuantMS. Thank you.